Hey, seafood dinner! What's up? It's the Culture Detective here, investigating your favorite albums. And today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new Bet Cover, a Beto Kaba album. <laughs> Uma, or in English, horse. So, Bet Cover is actually Japanese singer, songwriter, musician, Jiro Yanase, and also his band to an extent. And this is their brand new album. And I have been reviewing Bet Cover's music since two years ago uh, when they released the album Zikan, aka Time. And ever since two years ago, they have been releasing an album a year. They have been pumping out music non stop like a well oiled machine. But back to Zikan, aka Time, that album is surprisingly. Good, especially given the fact that nobody have talked about this album on the internet, like almost nobody, and I felt like I found a hidden gem, a hidden diamond in the rough because the songwriting, the eccentric performances, the use of pianos and guitars, the jazziness, it's all very refreshing. And then the last year, actually、uh, December、uh, last year,、um, they released a、uh, friggin'. Egg or Tamago. And、uh, because it got released really, really late last year, I reviewed it earlier this year. So now it's technically part of this year's roster, but it's actually last year. But Tamago is honestly peak bed cover, in my opinion. I think this is uh, at uh, their most creative. Peak performances, some of the most insane song structures, monster Frankenstein tracks, jazz fusions, ridiculous abstract lyrics. Bet Cover has literally dropped one of the best rock albums of the decade with Tamago. So, of course, I am absolutely thrilled to find out that they have a new surprise album, Uma or Horse. With this new release. And this album is much shorter, only eight tracks, and to a degree, it is less ambitious and less creatively explosive as Tamago, but it still has a lot of great elements, the things that made Bet Cover amazing in the first place. The album opens off hilariously with the track Virtual Sex, which is a high speed, chaotic, noisy mayhem of an album opener with guitars and, and vocals. Calls, yells, just all slammed together in the beginning. And we have these weird abstract lyrics about having a dream about virtual sex, that heavy metal guy. I don't really know what these lyrics mean, but、um, they are definitely really random. And、um, I mean, I looked at Genius, I went into Deep L to translate these lyrics, and I still don't understand them. But whatever it is, I think. Themes of、uh, being horny and wanting、uh, wanting intimacy is, is sort of shared throughout this entire album. So I guess it is only fitting for an album to open off with a track titled Virtual Sex. I guess if there's one problem I have with this track is that the chords are a little bit one note and the band slammed too many things together all at once, which makes this nowhere near as memorable as the album opener of Tamago. But, anyways, the rest of the album is freaking fantastic. We have the second track, Habatake Yoru no Nioi Ksa, or The Smell of the Night Grass. And it has the grimy bass, the freaky pianos, the chord progressions are cinematic, they're full of longing, they're poetic. And we have these deranged, detuned shots of guitars, which are really wild. Eccentric, shouty performances from Jiro Yanase. In lyrics, I guess describing an awkward meal you're poking the tofu and meat, and I eat、uh, a spoon of salmon, and it's it's kind of weird and awkward, and it's it's both very comedic,、uh, yet also very theatrical, and that's one of the things that makes this album so good. Following that, we have one of the highlights of the album, Kagami or Mirror. With the heavy shots of guitars, drums, and flutes, and pianos, and the intro, and then it transitions into something jazzy and laid back. Once again, it has amazing songwriting, it doesn't stagnate 
at any given moment because the the melodies the chord changes it just flows from point to point like water it's amazing and the next track flamenco is also fantastic with the airy joni synths the clicky drumsticks and the cri crispy bass in the beginning uh i guess if i have to speculate the track is written in the perspective of a horny girl who is desperate for love and attention Little, uh, near the end of the track, we get the synths with the vibrato sound effects and it all sort of builds up to an overblown climax at the end, which makes this really special. Then we have Himatsuri no Odori or Dance of the Fire Festival, also one of my favorites of the entire album. This track has a much more rustic edge to it with the rolling drums and the fiery acoustic guitars and the messy and chunky pianos and the verses and the choruses are insanely catchy. I really like that. There's something tongue in cheek with the vocal melodies as well. Fumetsu no Kuni or Unbreakable Nation is a fast paced rock jam with flinging hi-hats, jazzy pianos and lyrics about, uh, especially in the chorus, uh, looking at someone's butt and a volcano erupting, uh, which again feeds into the uh, strangely horny nature of the lyrics of the album, but also the the wild and unpredictable theatricalities of the lyrics. Uh, that being said though, I do think core progression wise, this track is a little bit average for the band, but still, hit this track up with any other indie rock bands right now, and this track will still be one of the better ones. Then we have Enten no Hi, or Day of the Blazing Sun, which is a really theatrical track. It feels like it came straight out of a play. It has the dramatic strings and pianos, and I love the expressive performances. And the album ends off with the track Mexican Papa. Um, I didn't really believe it at first when I found out that this track is actually called Mexican Papa, but it has these sweet, runny acoustic guitars. It's dreamy, it's psychedelic and nostalgic. It's very stripped back as well, which is very different from a majority of this album, which is really noisy. And lyrically, it is about being someone's Mexican Papa, having a Mexican girl or a Mexican girlfriend, living in a rundown motel and, and all that stuff. Again, it's very much stems from movies and the way movies depict uh, sort of this this noir, you know, I'm stuck in Mexico in a motel type of feeling. Um, so there's that really cool element of theatricality of the album. But overall, it is a really interesting ending to the album. I don't think this album is nearly as good as Tamago, given that Tamago is, again, extremely creative really subverts your expectations at many moments in the album, but this one is still a really great cacophonous noisy follow-up to Tamago, and I, uh, uh, you know, freaking bad cover, you know, they're up and coming. I mean, they're not up and coming. They've been making music for a while, but you know, they're slowly becoming one of the best rock outfits to come out of Japan in recent times. I'm giving the new bad cover album, Uma an 8 out of 10. So, have you listened to the new Bed Cover album? Comments below, let me know. Subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching.